Chapter 1. The Vision and Era Vintage or vintage-inspired, there is a difference. We are so glad you are planning a vintage wedding. A wedding is a time when we look forward to our future, but also to our past. Paying tribute to days gone by is a wonderful way to celebrate a joyous occasion. Vintage-themed weddings allow the couple to base their theme, vision, and decor off of influences that will set their special day apart from the -the run-of-the-mill wedding seen in all the magazines, blogs, and reality television shows. Let's talk about the word vintage, shall we? Some people associate it with antique shops, lace curtains, old furniture, and doilies. Others may associate it with a resurgence in fashion, culture, and styling from past eras. And others still may just associate it with anything that is remotely nostalgic or the usual cliché and gaudy proms, parties, and other events they attended with a vintage theme. The phrase true vintage typically describes authentic items from a specific time period. This could include items like your grandmother's wedding dress or an old set of wooden drawers passed down through the family. Vintage inspired or reproduction describes items that are reminiscent of an era or even an older style. Perhaps you may have seen or even owned one of those popular telephones that resemble an old antique rotary telephone. Upon closer inspection, you may find it is actually a plastic phone style made popular in the 1980s with a spiral coiled cord instead of the woven cloth covered wire and bakelite or catalan construction its predecessor would have had. There are good reproductions and vintage inspired objects and clothing out there, and there are bad. You have to make a decision early on in the planning process just how authentic you want your wedding to actually be. Upcycling is a popular thing for brides to do, but preserving vintage treasures is also a consideration. You wouldn't want to run the risk of your guests breaking hundred-year-old glassware, for example, but you may want to have the look or feel of such glassware at your table. How authentic do you want yourself and the bridal party to look? Vintage clothing is beautiful but sometimes delicate, and for a large bridal party may be somewhat impractical for a long day. There are so many options out there, from gowns with the right silhouette to gowns that are exact reproductions sewn from old patterns. We want to make it clear that the most wonderful thing about incorporating vintage elements into your special day is that you can incorporate anything you like, mix and match, and enjoy how it all comes together. Authenticity goes a long way towards achieving specific aesthetic, But the most important part of your wedding day is that you like it, and that it expresses your personalities and the love and commitment you have for one another. Never do something you don't like at your wedding because somebody told you it was expected of you by the guests, traditional, or that doing otherwise would bring you bad luck. Worrying about the expectations of others will bring you more bad luck than any old superstition might. Research, research, research. So you've decided you're going to have a vintage wedding, but you still aren't sure how it should look. You've seen inspiration boards and blogs out there. You're probably thinking about an old Hollywood movie you've seen, and you like the aesthetic of those beautiful bias-cut dresses and gorgeous waved hair. It's time to really nail down a good era or two to take inspiration from and go from there. We recommend you stick to one era, though, or it can dilute the desired effect and get confusing for your guests. There are some phenomenal websites and online resources dedicated to helping people understand and emulate the fashion of the past. Take time to do extensive reading about vintage fashion and traditions from the past. Look up old newspaper postings about weddings from the past. It used to be traditional in small towns for a newspaper to run short snippets about weddings of prominent citizens with breathless descriptions of the decorations, the flowers, who was seen at the event, and what the bride wore. You can find microfiche or digital versions of old newspapers just about anywhere, online or in your local library. Last but not least, study old photos from the era you are emulating. Seek out images of both celebrities and everyday people. Pay close attention to the hairstyles, the clothing, and the textures. Many brides had formal bridal portraits taken and were photographed days or weeks before the wedding, So there are these beautiful studio portraits of old-fashioned brides out there showing lots of these important details. When searching for old photos, you may have to weed through dozens of more contemporary bridal gown images that are labeled as vintage. Consider starting at the Vintage Fashion Guild, Metropolitan Museum of Art, or subscribe to the Vogue Archive. The Metropolitan Museum of Art has exquisite and sometimes very detailed photographs of period gowns. Look for more than just wedding gowns for your inspiration. 
Start researching decor trends, technological advances, popular artists and designers, musicians, and their music, architecture, and the historical events of the times you're interested in. Immerse yourself into the eras you are interested in with old movies, newspapers, magazines, and memorabilia. Most importantly, though, talk to older friends and family members. Ask about their recollections of the time and how a wedding from their younger years might have looked. Inquire about any mementos, photographs, or music that might inspire you. Look for connections that inspire you, and you may begin to find a recurring theme or idea that will help you nail down your own wedding. Historic Accuracy versus Pop Culture in the Vintage-Themed Wedding Many old weddings depict courtship and weddings as a popular recurring theme. We love to watch old movies too, but be careful. It wasn't until the last 15 years or so that Hollywood began aiming for their historic productions to really be authentic. Nostalgia and realism wasn't as important to audiences back then. One of the best examples is how our cultural misconceptions about 1920s fashion stem from a 1959 movie set in 1929 starring Marilyn Monroe that got everything wrong. Unfortunately, this misconception is what sells the thousands of sequined, slim-fitting Gatsby mini-dresses and feathered headdresses every year. The actual silhouette of true 1920s clothing was very different, even for party and flapper dresses. If you are aiming for even a vintage-inspired look and feel for your wedding, you'll find better inspiration looking at authentic sources than many of the more modern interpretations out there. Digital versions of old Hollywood magazines such as Movie Magazine, Photoplay, and Motion Picture Classic can be accessed online. They are full of old advertisements, beautiful photos, and articles about fashion and beauty. Choose your era. The 1910s era. This was an era that saw the end of the Gilded Age, suffragettes, the foxtrot, the automobile, the airplane, the sinking of the Titanic, and the First World War. Art Nouveau, the arts and crafts movement, and a growing fascination with new technology informed the aesthetics of the time. The Edwardian era was giving way to a new age. Women's clothing was becoming less restrictive, and corsets were being phased out. Women at home or in casual settings began to wear tea gowns that were worn without corsets and comfortable. During World War I, commerce between Europe and the United States had pretty much stopped, along with the production of silk and other fine textiles. Utilitarian clothing influenced by military uniforms, such as the long tunic worn over a skirt, was a popular style. For the first time, women began to wear work clothing and uniforms as part of the war effort. This was a decade that saw the rise of female clothing designers, such as Gabrielle Chanel, who began making more practical and casual sportswear. Men's fashion had not changed much from the previous decade, but pant legs were shortened and slimmer silhouettes began to emerge. Men, too, were excited to wear less restrictive and complicated clothing. Sportswear and the more casual lounge suit had become popular as daywear, considerably less formal than the frock coat. These suits were typically worn with a bowler or homburg hat. For formal events, the morning and frock coat designs were still considered the standard, and higher-class gentlemen continued to wear top hats. For evening wear, a well-dressed gentleman would wear a dark-colored coat with tails, a waistcoat, and trousers. Of course, military uniforms from this time were also widely worn by most men during World War I, even those serving in capacities at home. Men's fashion was also directly influenced by military uniform and designs. This decade marked the aptly coined trench coat, which continued to be popular after the armistice. It is still popular today. The 1920s era. A remarkable time of silent movies and epics, advances in air and automobile travel, the overshadowing Great Depression, post-war industry, the 1920s saw even more dramatic change than the previous decade. Women were for the first time allowed to vote. Fashion was heavily influenced by the exotic art of China and Egypt. Archaeological discoveries such as King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922 entranced the public. Americans were vacationing in warmer climates.